Hello, today we're going to be looking at the address tag library in EasyBuilder Pro, a feature that allows users to view applicable system tags or define their own tag names and properties for specified registers in the HMI and other register-based devices they are working with in their project. This can help avoid accidental reuse of registers as well as help to improve the readability of a project and is available for both CMT and non-CMT HMIs. The Address Tag Library can be found in the Project tab. Clicking on the Address button will open the library. At the top, we can see there are options to view user-defined tags or system tags, as well as a checkbox for classification. If checked, this will categorize the system tags into different classifications as shown. System tags can be very useful resources in a project, allowing users to reference and change HMI system information such as the IP address or the local second in regards to time. There is also a search bar at the top where you can search either the user-defined tags or the system tags for a specific register. When looking at the various tags, you will notice that some are in red and some system tags are grayed out. The tags in red indicate that the tag is currently being referenced in the project, while the grayed out system tags indicate that the tag is not supported by the HMI model. Another important characteristic of system tags is that some are read and write, while others are read only. At the bottom, we have options for adding a new user defined tag, deleting a tag, and editing the settings for the selected tag. The Batch Rename button allows you to search for a keyword or phrase within your user-defined tags and replace it. Let's now click on New to define a new tag for a Modbus device connected to the HMI. In the tag settings, we can define both the name of the tag as well as a comment generally used to describe the tag's purpose. We can also define which device and register that the tag will be associated with. If the tag is for a word register, you can restrict its data type, which is helpful in preventing incorrect data from being inputted into the register. Now, let's name this tag temperature, and let's also say that we have created a subroutine in the macro library that will convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. We can use this subroutine in our tag using the option at the bottom. Checking the conversion slash calculation box will open the options for using a macro subroutine in a tag. First, we must choose the converted data format. The options will be limited to the same size as the original data type, but can be converted to a different format, such as an unsigned short to a signed short. It's important to note that the return type of the subroutine must match the converted data type, and the parameter type of the subroutine must match the original data type of the tag. If you are using a CMT or CMTX series HMI, you will notice that you can choose between two modes, macro subroutine and elementary arithmetic. The elementary arithmetic mode is exclusive to the CMT and CMTX series and can be a helpful feature for those who do not want to implement a macro subroutine. Instead, writing the calculation for the conversion here directly. The syntax can be seen in the space provided before you start typing. The dollar symbol followed by the brackets with the V inside represents the data, and the calculator uses standard mathematical operator notation. You can also test the calculation using the test button to be sure you are getting the results you are expecting. For this video, we will select the macro subroutine for our mode. Now we can select when we want the conversion to happen, when reading from the register and or writing to the register. For this example, we will say that we simply want to be able to view the converted data in a numeric object. So we will choose the subroutine for the read conversion. For the write conversion, we want to choose a macro subroutine that converts the data back to Celsius from Fahrenheit. This way, if we want to change the temperature value from the HMI, we can do so without worrying about incorrect data being sent to the Modbus device. Another way we could have added a new tag is by using the CSV or Excel import slash exports. The easiest way to do so using this method is to first export the user tags to CSV or XLS file.
Here, we can see the format in which tags can be added manually through this method, provided they are typed verbatim according to the syntax. I would recommend first adding tags of various data types before exporting. That way, you can tell how you're supposed to type them syntactically. The import slash export feature can be helpful if you have a large list of tags you need to implement. This way, you can import them all at once. Another convenient method of adding a user-defined tag to your project is by creating the tag at the same time you create a new object. When adding a new object to your project, the Object Settings menu will pop up. You can click on the tag with the green plus sign and, just like in the Address Tag Library, you can define the properties and register that the tag will be associated with. If you click on the tag with the orange circle, you will be able to navigate both the system tags and user-defined tags. For example, say we wanted to display the local second, we can search for second in the search bar and select it, so that our numeric object now displays the local second as seen here. For our project, we will select the user-defined temperature tag we just created. Let's also create another numeric object set to the same address as our temperature tag, to show what the data would look like inside the Modbus device. It is worth noting that when an object, such as the numeric object we are using, is associated with either a user-defined tag or a system tag, the object's data type will be restricted to the type specified within the tag. Now we can start the simulation and see the address tag library features in action. As we can see, the Celsius temperature data in the Modbus device is converted to Fahrenheit for the numeric object. And if we write Fahrenheit data to the numeric object, it is converted to Celsius before being sent to the Modbus device. One last feature of the address tag library I would like to show is how to reference a user-defined tag in a macro. For example, say we needed the Fahrenheit data for another process in the HMI. The syntax for referencing a user-defined tag inside of a getData function would be as follows. getData, the data, the device name, user-defined tag name, and the data count. Normally, we would need to reference the exact register, but when working with the user-defined tag, we can simply write the name of the tag making implementation easier and improving the overall readability of the project. While this was just one way of using a user-defined tag, hopefully the exploration and implementation of the features in the address tag library shown in this video can help you to create and implement your own tags and help make your project easier to read for others. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our channel where we have more hardware and software tutorials you can also visit our website at wintechusa.com to get the latest software downloads, view our official documentation, and more. Thanks for watching.